Is there shoes that you can't skate in? Well, no, there isn't any. And it doesn't matter if you wear basketball shoes because apparently it doesn't make you better at basketball either. I thought these basketball shoes would make me good at basketball though. Fuck yeah, dude. Fuck. I just want to make one. All right, I'm going to make this one. I promise. I promise. Ooh, would you hear that shit? Swish, boy. I'll start this video off by a little story. When I first started skating, I didn't get skateboarding shoes because one, they were more expensive, and two, uh, my parents didn't want to get them for me. Like, even if I'm skating tranny, it doesn't really matter what shoes I have or a hubba. It'll still work fine. There are shoes that are made for skating, and then there are shoes that are made for basketball. These are the Air Jordan 6s, and these were made for basketball. But today I'm gonna skate them. I even went and bought a Space Jam basketball. <laughs> Which so far, they do feel pretty good, and they do fit true to size. But when I was younger, I never got skateboarding shoes. The majority of the time, I got basketball shoes. Not basketball shoes like these, because my parents wouldn't get me these. I would go to like Ross or Marshalls and get basketball shoes. Ugh. But a lot of people bring up a concern, it's a valid concern, and that is, how do the shoes flick? Oh, sorry, am I in the way? Oh, move out of the way, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead, dude. <laughs> <laughs> so, I would spend the majority of my time in basketball shoes when I was skating. Well, that was pretty close. And I learned how to skate in basketball shoes for the most part. I didn't learn how to play basketball, though. Let's see how these shoes flick. Oh, I have absolutely zero board feel. Because the main thing that differentiates a skateboarding shoe from a basketball shoe is the marketing. If a shoe is marketed for skateboarding, then it's gonna highlight impact protection and durability and things like that. But the things that are highlighted to market a skateboarding shoe is a lot different than things that would be marketed to highlight a basketball shoe. The only problem with these Jordans is there's zero. board feel but a lot of the time all those things that are in skateboarding shoes are found in normal shoes as well an insole that's a little bit thicker an outsole that has something special about it that'll make it so that your impact protection is better and for the most part a lot of these things do matter but do they really kind of not really because obviously these Jordan 6s are made for basketball but They do work for skateboarding, and it doesn't matter if they were made for basketball or if you find some shoes that are made for tennis or even some shoes that were made for boxing. These grounds are intense. You could probably skate them. Oh, yeah, that's nice. But can they ride downstairs? Hell yeah, they can. They can do anything. But just because you can skate every shoe doesn't mean that you should. Like if you find a shoe that looks cool and you want to skate it, but it's completely made out of canvas, then you're not going to expect that shoe to last that long. Or if the upper is really, really thin and doesn't have a lot of material on it, then you're also going to have a shoe that gets destroyed really fast. Unless you really want board feel and a loose shoe that breaks in really easily, you want to pick a shoe that's pretty solid. And if you're like a real board feely soul skater kind of guy, then you're probably gonna wanna pick a vulcanized shoe. And you can usually tell by the bottom of the shoe whether or not it's a vulcanized shoe or a cup sole. But if you like jumping down stuff a lot, then you're probably gonna wanna get a cup sole because that handles impact a lot better than a vulcanized shoe. When I was a kid, the majority of the time I skated Air Force Ones and shoes that were mostly basketball shoes. <laughs> Like all the time, I always skate basketball shoes. I don't know why I skate basketball shoes so much. I liked them, like they looked cool. And so I felt cool skating, but then other kids made fun of me because I had basketball shoes all the time and they get destroyed really fast and I didn't understand why. And they would tell me it's because of what they're made out of, but I didn't care because I was like, yo, these look cool. Because I thought they looked cool. So I just kept skating the basketball shoes. San Diego. But if you're learning how to skate, it doesn't really matter what shoe you're gonna try to start skating in, but for the most part, don't skate in a gym shoe. One of those 
foamy outsole mesh upper type of shoes. Do not try to learn how to skate in those because they're going to get destroyed really fast. And then after that, it's going to go to your feet. I don't know. I mean, skate them if you want, but they're going to get messed up quick. <laughs> but in short, to answer the question of whether or not there's a shoe that you should not skate, the answer is no. There's no rules to this. You're going skating. You're probably going to jump over a fence at a schoolyard and go skate some curves and get kicked out by some cops. There's still no rules, but the cops are nicer now because of the Olympics thing. They're just like, oh, you train for the Olympics? Oh, you draw the Olympics, huh? And you're just like, yeah, guy, I'm training for the Olympics. That's not what I'm doing. I'm just trying to film tricks for more videos for more content for you guys. But whether you're picking a vulcanized shoe or a cup sole shoe, make sure you pick a shoe that's gonna last you a little while. And if you're worried about impact protection and you think a skateboarding shoe is going to have better impact protection, while it might help, it never is great. So you usually have to put more insoles in there if you wanna jump down something for a long time, or just be really good at skateboarding and just land your trick every try. I've never been that guy. <laughs> <laughs> also probably concerned about your board feel, which is a very good point because these basketball shoes have absolutely no board feel. I cannot feel any edge of my board. I couldn't tell where my foot was when I set up with my board, which typically I like, but this is like over the top where I can't feel anything on it. Ha! That only matters for like when you first start skating them because after a while you'll either choose to get used to them or move on to a different shoe or just keep skating them until they're done and you never really was able to get used to them. But what I can say is that it is a choice on whether or not you want to choose to get used to the shoes that you're skating or move on to a different pair of shoes and hope that they feel better for your skating. I think I'm going to make the choice to keep skating these, so there might be a full review on these later. Not sure yet. Leave a comment if you think I should do a full review on these. Let me know. So make sure you subscribe for more shoe related skateboarding content and just skateboarding content in general. And these Jordan 6s are actually kind of sick. I'm going to keep skating them. I'm going to do like a full review on them soon. I keep an eye out for that and I love you and that's it. Bye. And if you've watched this far, leave a comment saying, whoa, that grass is green. Hey, I'm guessing that these are your shoelaces. <laughs> Can your shoelaces handle getting axed? Can your shoelaces stand up to a machete? <laughs> getting hit with an axe and a machete is nothing like skateboarding friction. Well, can it take a million kickflips from a belt sander? Those shoelaces weren't able to do it, but mine were. So, f those shoelaces and get some f ripped shoelaces. Link in the description. Your order is gonna come with free shoe drops while supplies last. Still, that, I don't know how long it's gonna take.